Welcome back to Grim 3D for part two of the Z-axis linear rail build on Monster D9-500. Stay tuned. So here's the bracket, completely redone. Well, I guess not completely redone. It's redone with the dimensions we were talking about in the last video, it's up there. And I'm pretty sure this one's gonna fit pretty good. I gotta get it on the monster today in this video. I wanted to show people some of my design processes in Design Spark Mechanical, but quite literally the video of doing all the design changes in here and setting it up to print properly on the Prusa in Prusa Slicer is about an hour's worth of video footage. So I'm going to include some of the highlights, but not a whole lot. So to see what I've done with this a little bit, uh, let's go to those highlights. So here's my piece and I got all my markings on it. But one thing you're going to not believe is that when I went to go ahead and try to measure this again to get some specifics on how to adjust this, I put it on this 2020 rail that goes in here. You can see in the drawing, if I turn it on, there's that 2020 rail. Okay, and that was kind of not bottoming out properly. And so the, the piece itself wasn't laying flat on the linear carriages, which was in the last episode there. But as I'm measuring it, this flopped down in there another centimeter or so and or two and it actually became perfectly flush across there so i really don't have to mess i don't think with this 2020 seat placement but i am going to assume that this little ridge right here down in the bottom is what's hanging me up so i'm going to take that ridge just so that it doesn't give me trouble in the future and i'm going to pull it back and I know it's kind of offset now but that doesn't matter because this is my pulley tightener system for the belt so I can pull that back it should drop onto these guides just fine I should be able to use my t-nuts just fine to get that in there so I think I'm good to give myself a little bit of leverage right there I think I'm going to go ahead and pull this back one centimeter which leaves me with between there and this wall 1.5 millimeters so i pulled that back one millimeter to take this to 1.5 millimeters behind that wall there which leaves me a nice even surface here with no perforations in it so i think my issue with the 2020 extrusion is taken care of and it should seat all the way in there and it should be happy now and this should line up with that, and that should line up perfectly as it sits on there. So I think I'm in business there. But second thing I needed to take care of was the linear rail that goes on top of this 2020 was hitting on this plastic right here. So the linear rails are basically 12 millimeters wide and 8 millimeters tall. So I'm going to go ahead and cut myself a tunnel in here because I really would like to be able to use that screw right there still. So I guess the first thing I'm going to do, maybe I'll move that screw back a couple of centimeters, which in Design Spark you can do like this. I'll just grab it like that. See how that grabbed just that top portion of it. And then I just go ahead and move it. And I can move it back, let's say, two millimeters. Now, I know it's a little bit offset from the bottom one, but it's not going to matter. It'll be okay. I just don't want to get it too close to this one because then maybe the T-nuts the T -nuts will clash when I try to put them together. I don't know. I haven't measured them, but it's a good bet that I, that I can do that. So now with my 2020 extrusion on top there, I'm going to measure myself a little tunnel for that top linear rail to go into. I don't really want to cut the linear rail. I don't necessarily want to put a big old chunk out of this like I did with my cutters and it really doesn't have to be that much clearance so what I'm going to do is looking at it from this direction I'm going to go ahead and do some construction lines to get my design in the right place now being that it's 12 millimeters 
wide and it's dead center on this extrusion, I'm going to go from this center point out. But instead of just going out 6, I'm going to go out 6.5 so that my tunnel would be a half a millimeter bigger on both sides. And then from here, I'm going to go up 9 with my construction line so then I can come through with a real rectangle and I can build myself a box in the right location that is 9 by 13. And there we go. So I've got now a box that's perfectly centered on my center line that's centered on everything else down there. I can go ahead and I can pull this and I will pull this through. Let's say I want to go through, let's try five millimeters. So five millimeters gives me pretty good space between there and there. Maybe I'll go 5.5 for a little extra room. So I still have some space between there and my screw to give me some supports there. I've got a tunnel now that my linear rail can fall back into so I don't have to cut anything on my rail. So I hope that wasn't too boring. I tried to move through it pretty good. This is my end result. Printed out fantastic. Looks great. I'm hoping all the dimensions are exactly where I want them to be. I think they will be. I'm in pretty good shape. One thing I decided to do before we go back to the printers, I decided that I'm going to need to cut that linear rail off a little bit. It actually sticks down below the frame of the D9500. So I'm just going to go ahead and chop that thing. I just need a little bit off the end here, so I'm just going to really quick just... All right. That's looking nice. So there we have it. It's chopped. It's looking pretty nice. Time to go over the machine. So here I have my chopped linear rail. Uh, I know the, the view here is not fantastic because the space that I have this monster in is is kind of tight but i have screws put in every other t-nuts on there ready to go just going to go ahead and button it down right on here uh right on this 4040 and then we can start with the install i don't think these screws with the t-nuts on the back have to be all that tight Actually, uh, they hold really well, and this is very rigid, so um, as long as you get all of them to grab, and I, I would think they would need want to be pretty evenly tight, however, to make sure that you don't introduce any warpage over time. So, got that installed. Now I'm going to go ahead and install my bracket, starting with this 2020 extrusion right here, which is going to require some screws and T-nuts. And I'm going to use the T-nuts that came out of there and probably the same screws. Anyways, here's the screw. It's a four millimeter screw. And I'll just have it in there like that. Now I need the other two. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is properly lined up. Make sure that those carriages are in the right place. There we go, that's dropping in. The bracket over here is dropping in. I think I'm going to go ahead and put some M3s in here to make sure that everything's straight. I'll grab a little bit different view here. So maybe you can see the way these are going in. They're actually going in fairly smooth. They're just transitioning from the plastic into the linear rail very smoothly get a little tiny bit of tension on that and then call it good call that good and i've got eight screws in there next thing i think i'm going to do before i even tighten up these t-nuts into the 20 by 20 extrusion is I'm going to take my carriage that I have here. All I've done is pull this apart and put the belt in it. I'm going to go ahead and take this belt 
carriage and put it in there and tighten it down. That way it'll make sure that everything is nice and straight there. So I'm expecting it to actually pull this part in a little bit here, at least to get it where the tension needs it to be. So as I do that, I'm going to make sure that my belt is not getting caught up on anything. And I'm going to go until I've got pretty decent tension on that. So that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten down these screws here. with the T-nuts on the back side that are now inside the 20, 20 extrusion. Everything's looking beautiful. Good tension on the belt. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my square nuts in here and bolt this on from this side. there you have it full install next thing to do is to fire up the printer try running up running the z-axis up and down make sure everything lines up properly and let's try that out all right let's just try some simple moves here z-axis up sounds beautiful in order to get it down any further, we'll have to home it. So let's go ahead and home the Z. Well, I hope you enjoyed that two-part series. The Z axis is working good. Went all the way from the top to the bottom. I'm not really ready to start printing with it yet, but stay tuned for some more videos on the D9500. I call it the monster. We're going to be making some big stuff. We're going to be printing some stuff now that I got it back online, the Z axis. One of these days I'll do the motor side of the Z axis and convert that to linear rails as well. So that's it for this episode of Grim 3D. Thanks for sticking around. Remember, comment if you like, ring that bell, smash that like button. Let's mess with that YouTube algorithm and keep growing the family here at Grim 3D. We'll see you out there. Mm -hmm.